We're meeting up with local astronomer and author Bob Meisen, who is going to reveal a closer look at our planets and teach us about perhaps the most astounding and iconic feature of our solar system, the rings of Saturn. And clap for me. Hello, nice to see you again. <laughs> this is my medium sized telescope, it's a Dobsonian. Yeah. Oh, the Dobsonian is the most simple telescope, and it has a rotating platform. Yeah. Eyepiece will go Eye in there. go in there, we mustn't forget to take those. But there was, when I got it, a little finder on there, but I tend to use a, a little laser finder which uh, is much more accurate. So, if you wanted to see Saturn, mm -hmm. you have you got to have something like this? Yeah, really? we, we, yeah. I mean, uh, you can see the rings of Saturn with small telescopes, mm. but basically the planet then just looks like a little oval. It was something like this. You can actually see it as a ringed planet. Everything sort of stands out. If you looked for one of these second hand, you might get one for a couple of hundred perhaps. You get what you pay for with telescopes. Big eyepieces give you small magnification. If it's a big hole, mm. it won't magnify a lot. If it's a little hole, it'll magnify a bit more. <laughs> this uh, this is the night sky app that oh, yeah. I use. So Saturn is there. Yeah. Yeah. Mars hasn't quite come up yet. We're at the 2nd of August. Yeah. What are the best times in order to get a good view? The planets can be around at any time. Mm. It's just a question of uh, when is it going to be dark. We've got your Venus just above the trees there. Saturn is very faint, but is up there. And then we've got Mars. You can see the redness of it just with the naked eye. But we have, what, what have you got there, Bob? You've got... Uh, this is Jupiter I'm looking at now. This is a low magnification, but even with that, you can still see three of its four main moons. Beautiful orange colour. So Mars looking more orange than it should be. Why do you think Sat seeing Saturn is, is such a uh, sort of eye-opening experience for people? Well, in sort of small and medium-sized telescopes, planets tend to be a little bit featureless. You could, you might see the the bands on Jupiter, but it's not easy sometimes. But Saturn is absolutely easy. Even a smallish telescope will show you the rings. And I think the wonderful thing is that people having seen pictures of this throughout their lives, they, they, are, they actually realise that they're seeing the real thing. Saturn has, just like Jupiter, has large storms on it. It has a, a hexagon of cloud formations. And uh, on the big planets, the storms can be Earth-sized and even greater. And the winds, as you say, can blow at a thousand kilometres an hour. So they're not not places you'd consider a, a sort of tourist trip to. And so we're quite lucky to be set on such a placid planet. That's right. The number of uh, ice chunks in Saturn's rings is incredible. Uh, it, there, there is about um, something like 40 quadrillion tonnes of ice orbiting in these rings. And another amazing thing is that when they edge on to you, as it happens occasionally, you can't see them because they're incredibly sort of thin rings. They're only possibly 100, 200 metres thick, but they're very, very wide, 80-something thousand kilometres across the rings of Saturn. 107,000 miles, I know it in miles. Yeah. And uh, they are the jewel of the solar system. So we are pointing at Saturn now, are we? We are pointing at Saturn. I'll just make sure that it's not drifted away out of the field, which it has, of course. Try and find it again. Okay, there it is, right in the centre. Oh, wow, well, yeah. I knew you were going to say, well, everybody does. <laughs> We've had a pretty good look at Saturn. We also saw Mars, Jupiter, Venus, the Andromeda galaxy, we've had sort of, we've been spoilt for choice really. Um, Bob's been fantastic, so we're just going to de rig now. Um, it's about 11 o'clock, so we're going to get back.